Welcome to another exciting game of chess. Today, we will be analyzing a game between Ikwan underscore Nazir is white and NJ3v14 is black on chess.com. The game began with e4 as the first move by white, which is known as the king's pawn opening. Black responded with c6, the Karo can defense, which is one of the popular defenses against e4. The game then continued with d4, d5, and e5, the advanced variation of the Karo can defense. The Karo can defense is a popular and solid opening choice for black, and the advanced variation is one of the main lines in the Karo can defense. In this variation, white advances their pawn to e5, aiming to control the center of the board and gain space on the king side. Black responds with their own pawn to c6, preparing to develop their knight to c7 and potentially challenge white's control of the center with moves like d5 or e6. The advanced variation can lead to sharp and complex positions, as both sides fight for control of the center and attempt to exploit weaknesses in the opponent's pawn structure. Black must be careful not to fall behind in development or get trapped in a cramped position, while white must be wary of overextending and leaving weaknesses in their pawn structure. Overall, the Karo can defense, advanced variation is a fascinating and challenging opening for both players, and can lead to a wide variety of strategic and tactical battles. Whether you prefer to play as black or white, this opening is definitely worth studying and incorporating into your repertoire. Continue to the game, black played e6, blocking the pawn chain, and white continued with nf3 and b2, aiming to control the center and develop the pieces. Black then played n7, and white castled kingside. Now, white initiated a pawn exchange in the center with c5, and black responded with cxd4. White continued with qxd4, putting pressure on the black pawn on d5. Black played f6, trying to gain space and chase away the white knight on f3, but this move weakened black's position. White responded with nc3, putting more pressure on the black pawn, and then played fx e5, opening up the f-file for the rook. Black captured the knight on e5 with nx e5, but white responded with qx e5, winning a pawn and putting more pressure on black's position. Black played ne7, aiming to defend the weak pawn on d5, but white played a powerful move, bb5+, forcing black to give up the bishop pair by playing bd7. White then played qx e6, a strong tactical move, which led to the downfall of black's position. Black's king was exposed, and white took advantage of this by playing qg4, attacking the g7 pawn. Black played a6, trying to defend, but it was too late. White continued to attack with bh6, threatening to take the knight on f6 and create a discovered check. Black played qx h6, hoping to counterattack, but white played f4, blocking any further attack and gaining more space. Black played ng6, trying to block the white queen's attack, but it was not enough. White played f5, creating a passed pawn and further restricting black's position. In the end, black's position collapsed, and white won the game by checkmate, delivering the final blow with a beautiful queen and rook checkmate combination. A great victory for Ikwan underscore Nazir as white. In this game, white played a solid opening and gradually built up an advantage through careful piece placement and tactical play. Black's decision to play f6 on move 7 weakened their position and allowed white to gain control of the center. White seized the initiative with aggressive play, sacrificing a pawn to open up lines of attack. Despite some resistance from black, white's strong and coordinated play ultimately led to a checkmate. Overall, this was a well-played game by white, demonstrating the importance of strategic planning and calculated risk-taking in chess.